Really? Really? Your Uber driver tried to kidnap you? Really? Your Lyft driver started stalking you? Enough with the lies. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is the first time you're seeing my face. My name is JC and I have a story time for you guys. Now, if you follow other story time YouTubers, you may have noticed a trend in the past couple of years where they all seem to have like some wildly outlandish story about like an Uber driver that either tried to like kidnap them or stalk them or kill them or like veer off the road and risk all of their lives. I've never actually had an Uber or Lyft driver that is that crazy. But what I do have is a nice heartwarming story. And it was an experience that happened a few years ago that actually really stuck with me. And so while I don't have some super intense crazy story, I do have a nice story about the best Uber driver that I've ever had. So if you like story times that are more tame and mundane and just like we're best friends chit chatting, catching up over some margaritas at dinner, then make sure to like this video and subscribe for some future story times just to, just to kind of come hang out with us. But with that being said, let's get started on this story time. So this story begins about three years ago when I was in San Francisco for New Year's time with a group of my friends. So at this time, most of my friends were all coupled up and they each got their own like nice swanky hotel room in downtown San Francisco to celebrate the romantic holiday. I was single at the time and I ended up staying with my best friend who lived in San Francisco to save a little bit of coin. The only issue was that he lived in South San Francisco, which if you don't have a car traversing the city is quite a distance away from downtown. So when I was going into downtown from his apartment, I would have to take a train and then either a bus or rent one of those like metro bikes into wherever I was going. So it did take a little bit of time to get into the cool downtown part of the city. The other reason it took so long was because I was cheap. I wasn't Ubering or lifting anywhere because it was expensive. Like they had surge pricings around the holidays and it was like a 20 to $40 ride just to go one way to go to a bar. I was like, nah, I'll just spend the extra time, take a book, take the train and get there for pennies on the dollar. So there was one night where all of my friends had just gotten into town and they texted me and they said, hey, we're gonna meet at this bar in one hour, be there or be square. And I was like, well, I'll be square because I'm gonna be late. <laughs> and that was because I checked the train schedule and I was like, okay, I can't catch the train for another hour. Then it's gonna take me another hour or so just to get into the city. So I'll meet you guys there. I'll just be late. So my friends, bless their heart, I get a little notification on my phone from Venmo and they Venmoed me 20 bucks and they're like, stop being cheap, get your little butt down here as soon as you can. And already I was like, oh, that's so nice. Like they, they sent me money just to like not have to take the train and to Uber there, which I thought was so sweet. So already my night was off to a great start. However, I am once again, still super cheap because I checked the Uber prices and during this time of night, you know, like rush hour for happy hour, rush hour for happy hour, rush happy hour, you, you know, you know. It was, it's kind of like surge pricing again. And so to take just a regular Uber from my doorstep to the bar doorstep was gonna be like $45. And I was like, <laughs> I won't be able to drink if I pay for that. <laughs> so what I decided to do instead was to take an Uber pool. So now during this time, Uber pool was still pretty new. And I think it was only a beta kind of service in these cities. So if you're not familiar with the different types of Ubers, there's regular Uber where they basically pick you up from your exact doorstep. They drop you off at the doorstep of where you want to go. Uber pool is a little bit more economical. You tell them where you're getting picked up, but you have to walk to a general intersection. So like at the most two or three blocks, they'll pick you up from that general intersection and then drop you off in a general intersection of where you're going. So it's not quite doorstep to doorstep, but it just saves a little bit of time. And the other thing about it is that Uber pool comes from carpool. And so there are other people getting picked up along the way. So it does take a little bit longer because there are other passengers that need to get dropped off en route to where you are going. But the trade-off is that you do save a significant amount of money. So to Uber pool was still gonna take me quite a bit of time. I think the range it gave me was between a half hour and an hour compared to like 25 minutes if I just did a direct Uber. Um, but it was only $20 and I was like, <laughs> that's good enough for me. 
So I walk to my intersection to be picked up by my Uber driver, whom I will call Gerald. So the car pulls up and I see that there are already two people in the back seats. <sighs> Which sucks because that means I have to get the front seat. Now, I know I'm a talker, I know I like talking to new people and, you know, making new friends. <laughs> but when it comes to Ubering, I hate talking to people. I don't know why I hate talking to my Uber driver. I think it's because it's like forced small talk just to kind of fill the time and fill the silence knowing that I'll never actually see this person again. Whereas like in my regular day to day life, I consider it more like networking or like add me on Instagram, we can be friends. You know, when it's Uber drivers, it's kind of just like, it feels like they're bullying me into conversation. And so I'm not the biggest fan. So I was like, dang it, I'm in the front seat but that's all right, that's all right. So I hop into the passenger seat and to my luck, the Uber drive for the next like 15 minutes was very quiet. There were three of us in the car and nobody was really talking. Some people had headphones in. We we're kind of just vibing and our Uber driver had like a Motown R&B station kind of playing, which is music that I enjoy. So I was like, all right, we're just vibing at this point. So passenger number one gets dropped off, passenger number two gets dropped off, and then sure enough, it's just me left in the car <laughs> in the front seat, which is kind of funny. And so a song comes on the radio that I am familiar with, and I'm kind of just like, you know, pretending I'm in a music video as one does, where I'm just gazing out the window, watching all of the San Franciscan cityscape fly by, and I'm mouthing this song, and my Uber driver, Gerald, he looks over at me and he goes, excuse me, I thought it was really cute. He goes, excuse me. <laughs> I don't know why that was so cute. But he goes, excuse me, do you know this song? And I was like, yeah, I, I kind of do. And he goes, do you know who sings it? So I look over at him and I kind of coyly answer. I'm saying, that's actually really funny because I do know this song. It, it's a song called If This World Were Mine. And I tell him, I know this song by Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell, who you guys know is the singers of Ain't No Mountain High Enough. And I was like, I grew up with this song but i can't tell who's singing this version i was like it sounds like luther vandross but i don't know who the girl is so i know this song but i don't know this version and he goes that's what i'm saying he was like i know this song but i can't figure out who's singing it so we're kind of chit chatting back and forth and we start guessing we're like okay that's for sure luther though right yeah that's luther who could this girl be could it be this person or this person so i pull out my phone and i shazam it because <laughs> that was cool three years ago and it says it was, sure enough, Luther Vandross and Cheryl Lynn. And he was like, oh, I don't know Cheryl Lynn. And I was like, oh, I don't either. But hey, we figured it out. At least we're on the right track and we kind of identified it clear enough. So at this point, I'm kind of talking to him and I look over to him and I realize that he reminds me so much of my dad. You know, he was a, a small little black man with a mustache listening to Motown and R&B. That, that's my dad in a nutshell. <laughs> So despite not usually loving talking to my Uber drivers, I was looking at Gerald here and I was like, all right, you feel familiar, you feel safe, but also we have some shared interests. So I will open myself up to conversation. So we kind of start talking and he's like, okay, so you like R&B and Motown. How did you get into that? And I explain that, oh, you know, like I grew up on this stuff. My dad loves listening to this music, you know, The Temptations, Stevie Wonder, Luther Vandross, The Four Tops. I could go on and on, but I'll spare you guys. And so he was saying, oh yeah, I love that music too. So do my kids. And actually, fun fact, my son has played in the band several times for Earth, Wind & Fire, like in their concert touring band. And I was like, wait, what? That's insane. Tell me more about that. He goes on to explain that his son um, has like a doctorate in musical, musical, <laughs> music, I guess is the word. His son has a doctorate in music and has toured with several of these bands and artists that I had heard of. And I was like, wow, that's amazing. Like your son sounds really talented. And then he starts explaining, well, actually, my daughter is super talented. She is some type of, and I, the details might be kind of foggy here, but he starts explaining how super incredibly educated and talented each one of his kids were. I remember he said he had three. One was like this doctor in music. He said that his daughter was some type of super high level surgeon at like a very big hospital here in San Francisco. And she is like one of the highest ranking females in all of the hospital. And I was like, wow, that's insane. His third kid, I remember him explaining, was in engineering and also super educated and super well off. So as he's telling me about his kids, I say, you know, that's amazing how educated and talented all of your kids are. You must be so proud. And he goes on to explain how 
In raising them, it was super important in conveying to each of them that as black individuals, they're gonna face twice as many hardships and obstacles in climbing the corporate ladder. But because of that, it was so much more important for them to overcome those disadvantages and be the first and the best in their prospective industries in order to kind of like break all of those glass ceilings for future generations. And I am sitting there like, oh my gosh, this is, <laughs> literally the most inspiring like story I've ever heard. So then he kind of turns it on me and he says, well, tell me about you. What's your career field? What are some of your dreams and goals? And I say, well, I'm in marketing and I'd love to be able to move up and make a difference and someday create my own brand. Like I'm not really sure. And he starts preaching at me the way my dad preaches at me. So <laughs> my dad doesn't, he doesn't get mad. He lectures at you like a preacher. And he brings in all this worldly knowledge to kind of like teach you a lesson in that sense. And the way Gerald started talking to me reminded me so much of my dad where he was saying, you know, you are gonna face intersectionality in your life where you are technically a woman of color, you are a female, and you're gonna have disadvantages that you're gonna have to overcome. But as long as you are a strong, independent, powerful woman, like you absolutely can do it. And I'm sitting there getting driven to a bar in San Francisco being like, yeah, 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 I am a strong independent woman and I'm gonna beat those boys and break glass ceilings and be the CEO of a company someday. Yes, Gerald, yes. Anyway, <laughs> so he says to me, and this is the part that I remember the most, he goes, yeah, that's, I'm really passionate about this because I was one of the first black men to ever receive a doctorate from my university. And I was like, whoa, Gerald, wait, tell me more about that. Gerald starts telling me how he grew up in the South where everything was very segregated, but he moved to California where he was able to pursue his education all the way to his doctorate. And I said, wow, what's your doctorate in? And he says, education. I'm actually a professor here at the University of San Francisco. And it was like, <laughs> Gerald, what the hell are you doing driving me around in an Uber? <laughs> Dr. Gerald, I should say, was a professor at the local university. Now, I don't remember what exact subject he taught, and I don't even remember his actual name, which I'm really bummed about because I'd love to be able to look him up. But I kind of look over and I was like, Gerald, I mean no offense as my surrogate father for this, this drive right now, but what the hell are you doing driving Uber? And he explains to me that recently his wife had passed away. The love of his life, who he had been married to for over 45 years, passed away. And once she passed away, he had a lot of time on his hands. And he wanted to fill that time meeting new people and exploring his, his city. He kind of explained that he had lived in San Francisco for so many years, but he was so encapsulated with his work, with being a teacher and with his family, raising these amazing children, that he said he never really got a chance to explore the city. So once his wife passed away, he kind of saw the opportunity to not only explore his city, but to meet new people, get new perspectives, and kind of like continue teaching other people outside of the classroom and outside of his own children to like follow their own worth and follow their own dreams. And I feel like I'm getting emotional talking about it. I don't know. And then I was like, oh my God, Gerald, that's so sad. Like, I'm so sorry. I don't know. Hang on. And he was saying, no, it was a, it's such a blessing. She lived such a wonderful life. And look at the life that I'm living now. I am in my 70s exploring this city, meeting new people, and I feel like I get to inspire others. And I'm like, holy crap, that is amazing. So it was so funny because we're literally having, <laughs> we're literally having like this heart to heart moment. And then he goes, you hear like a ding on his phone and he goes, oh, we have another passenger we need to pick up. Is that okay? And I was like, don't ask me. Of course it's okay. You're the Uber pool driver. Like, yeah, get your money. Let's pick them up. So we pick up this next person and it was literally like within the, the 35 to 40 minutes Gerald had been driving me around, we had established like such a rapport that this person hopping in is probably like, what the heck did I just come into? Like, is this your daughter, sir? Like what's happening? And so sure enough, like they come in and that person was a lot more chatty. And so they're just like, hey guys, how's your night going? So I like to turn around and I'm talking to this person, we start incorporating them into the conversation. And remember that person was super cool. They were like, yeah, I'm just in town visiting for New Year's. And I was like, oh, same, where are you headed to? Gerald, do you have any recommendations? And so the conversation got a lot more lively and bubbly and not as like deep and introspective as it was before, which was totally fine. So I had been in the Uber for probably close to like 45 minutes to an hour. And I would say maybe around 
35 to 40 minutes of that time, I was actually talking to Gerald and having this like one-on-one -on -one deep, intense conversation. So the other person gets dropped off before me because again, the Uber pool figures out the best route and they only had a shorter distance to go. So they get dropped off and then it's just back to me and Gerald, but I'm a couple blocks away. And he says, okay, like your, your stop's coming up. Like, I just want to let you know that I enjoyed our conversation so much. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Oh, this is why I cry all the time. Don't ruin my makeup, please. So Gerald says, your stop is coming up soon. I just want to let you know that I enjoyed our conversation so much. Like, this is one of the reasons that I do it is to kind of just like talk to people like you. And I really hope you have such a wonderful remainder of your trip. And then he says that like, I remind him of his daughter a little bit and like my drive ambition and all of that. And I was like, I don't know, you didn't get to know that much about me in a half hour long conversation, but I still feel like this weird bond that I got from him. So as we're pulling up to the stop, he goes, wait, do you have a minute? Like, do you have a second? And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. So he kind of pulls over and does that like halfway, like double parking where he puts on his hazards. He opens up his glove box and he takes out a piece of paper and he writes down on the piece of paper something I didn't see yet. And he goes, listen, while you're driving around San Francisco, like you like Motown, listen to this song as you're driving around next time. It's the best song and it's my favorite song. You'll love it. And I was like, thanks, Gerald. Like, thank you so much. I hope you have a wonderful night. So I'm standing on the sidewalk. I watched Gerald drive away off to go pick up more passengers. And it was so funny because I'm literally standing outside of a bar where I'm about to go get turned with my best friends, just kind of standing there thinking that was without a doubt the most <laughs> reflective and thoughtful Uber drive I've ever had. Like, I feel like it was some weird motivational therapy. And so I opened up the piece of paper and on it was a song and it was, I left my heart in San Francisco and he had written the Stevie Wonder version specifically. And I wish I could play that for you guys right here, but copyright. But I kid you not, you guys, go listen to that version and just picture yourself like riding a bus throughout San Francisco, just falling in love with the city. I swear I could have cried right then and there because one, I love that song. Two, I didn't know Stevie Wonder sang a version. But three, I felt like Gerald shared a little piece of himself with me. And that, that, like my whole trip, I would be thinking of him and just thinking of how like inspiring that whole drive made me feel. So it also kind of felt like a movie because I walk into this bar and all my friends are like, JC, you made it. Albeit, I still was a little bit late because again, I decided to pool and not door to door Uber. And so they were like, oh, what took you so long? And I had to be like, you know what guys? I left my heart in San Francisco. And they were like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> so I ended up telling about the whole Uber drive later and they were just like, oh, that's really cool. Like, glad that worked out for you. And I was like, yeah, thanks so much for sending me the money because I probably would have just taken a train up to this bar and I would never would have met Gerald and I would have never lived my life as I do today, reminding myself that I am a strong woman and I need to break the glass ceilings in order to create a better future for future generations. So thank you, Gerald. And thanks to dad, because there was something about Gerald that just felt like my dad was wearing a disguise to kind of teach me a life lesson as I'm about to go puke out my brains from getting too drunk with my friends. So thanks to both of you guys. So that was my story of the best Uber drive that I've ever had. I've had really good experiences with some of those ride sharing apps, um, but I'd love to hear some of your stories. You know, I feel like there's so many crazy experiences out there. I'd love to hear some of the good stories that you've had. So let me know down in the comments if you created a bond with an Uber driver or if you've had a really inspiring conversation with them as well because I think the world could use a little bit more positivity and a little bit more truth to some of these stories you know even if it is a little bit more mundane I think those are a lot more inspirational so thank you guys so so much for checking out this video I know it was a short and quick one but I wanted to share with you guys so remember to subscribe if you want to hear future story times and I will see you next time toodles Oh my gosh, did you guys hear about that one Uber driver who was on the app for like weeks and never picked up a single passenger? All that time and nothing to show for it. <laughs> show for it. Show for...